Hi, I'm John Gilstrap, author of the Jonathan Grave Thriller series, here with another look behind the scenes of uh, writer's life and the publishing industry. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a video on the importance of a literary agent in a writer's life, and I got a fair uh, response on that. I've had a number of questions that have been asked as a result, so I thought I'd do another uh, video about agents. Specifically, how do you find one, and how do you choose from among the, the pantheon of agents that are out there, which one is, is best for you. I remember in all elements of this business, it is in fact a business. And like any other business, there's a duty on you to do due diligence. You don't just wander into a business relationship without having some kind of background knowledge on what it is you're getting yourself into. So I recommend that if you have a finished manuscript, and the finished manuscript is really important, particularly for fiction. It's a little less important for nonfiction. Uh, but when you have a, a manuscript that's ready to go and you want to find yourself a, a literary agent, subscribe for a month to Publishers Marketplace. Uh, I think it costs about $25 to, um, to subscribe. And in Publishers Marketplace, Everything that happens in the, the book world is listed there. You will find what editors bought what properties from what agents and who, uh, what agents represent different, uh, different authors and that sort of thing. So give yourself a, a, a little bit of a head start in uh, deciding what agents you think you might want to go to. After you've done that, once you get your list, go to the individual websites for those agents. This is much easier to do than it was when I got into this 20 years ago. Uh, go to the individual websites and see what it is that they're interested in representing and also see uh, how what it is they want to receive from you. Do they want to get a first chapter? Do they want a chapter and a synopsis? Do they want the whole manuscript? That'll all be on their websites. So that's how you find the names of the agents. What do you want to look for? Well, I'll tell you this. There is an organization called AAR, the Association of Authors Representatives, which is sort of a, it, it is the a group that requires its members to, uh, and all literary agents, it requires its members to hold steadfast to certain uh, practices. For example, they can't charge reading fees. Um, they have to be essentially legitimate businesses. If an agent is a member of the Association of Authors Representatives, AAR, you can count on them being, one, legit, and secondly, pretty honest folks. Now, having said that, there are a lot of um, very worthwhile and reputable agents who are not members of AAR, so I'm not casting aspersions on those, but it is a place to start, to, to um, go looking. Uh, you also want to make sure, they, they require, AAR requires you can't commingle funds. In other words, agency funds can't be mixed with the, the, the author's funds as, as the money comes in. There, there are a lot of ways uh, that things can go badly if uh, business practices are, are not open and above board. Um, you want to assure that the agent that you're hiring or you're talking to has some kind of a track record and has a track record in the kind of book that uh, you, you want to sell. Um, make sure that the two of you are on the same page editorially. P sorry about the pun. Um, you want to make sure that uh, they like your work. And you would think there are some agents who get involved with a client because they think that they can make money from the client, and that's a perfectly legitimate reason to do business. Uh, but you really, I want to have an agent that is a fan of my work and that I, that I can work with. Um, you want to make sure that your agent uh, find out how much care and feeding of the author is your agent willing to do. There are some agents who just pretty much don't read the manuscripts they represent, they just send them out. Uh, I personally wouldn't be interested in that kind of a relationship because, uh, not that I'm particularly needy, although maybe I'm a little bit needy, but it's nice to have that editorial step uh, in between. And again, it gets back to having an agent that's a fan of, of the work, but you also want to make sure that they're fairly good editors. You know, that, that the suggestions they're going to give you are suggestions that you want to take. Get some idea of what the agent would want to do with your manuscript. Who would they want to send it out to? Not by editor's names necessarily, because you're probably not going to know who they are anyway, but what is the overall marketing plan? Not for selling the book to, to 
the, the published book to the reading public, but what is the marketing plan for selling your book to a publishing house? And make sure that that, that makes sense to you. Make sure it's a, it's, um, it, it, it passes the sniff test that you, uh, uh, that, that you put out there. Some agencies now, actually, as I understand it, the bulk of agencies now require a contract, an agency contract between client and agent. I have never had one. Um, I've always, I've been two literary agents and, and two film agents now, and it's always been on a handshake. I prefer to operate on a handshake basis in, in this line of work because, you know, if, if it turns out that they can't sell the book or if I, if, if we want to have, just want to part our ways, it's silly in a creative endeavor, I think, to be bound together in, uh, in a contractual way. The agency clause, the commissions, that sort of thing, are all set up in the publishing contract itself. So I personally don't see a reason to have a, an agency contract, but I know that a lot of agencies uh, insist on that. And, you know, it's, it's not a, a bad thing necessarily. I just don't understand it. The one thing you want to make sure, two things you want to make sure of if you've got a contract. One, that there's a good divorce clause, that with a reasonable notice, uh, you'll be able to part ways if, if things don't work out. The second thing you want to make sure is that the contract itself is only for one book. You don't want to have your entire future tied to an agency if, in fact, um, the, you just don't get along anymore, or if it turns out that you're not as productive an author as they thought you were going to be, or if the agent dies or gets hit by a truck or whatever. You just don't want to be tied to an agency moving forward. I said there were two things, there's actually three. And the third one is you want to make sure that any unsold rights, when you do part ways, that any unsold rights go with the author. They don't stay with the agency. All right, that's kind of a quick overview. It looks like we're running about seven minutes on this video, which is longer than I like them to be. So um, maybe we'll come back and, and talk some more about this in a different video. Meantime, y'all take care and please keep reading. I'm John Gilstrap.